What is Dr. John MacArthur's view of saving faith and why does it need debunking? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society and I have some good news for you today. While I appreciate much of what Dr. MacArthur writes and preaches about as he's very conservative and teaches the Bible verse by verse, when it comes down to the saving message and what a person must do to be saved, I'm sorry, but I do not agree with him. I find he has departed from the teaching he had up until 1980. His view of saving faith is just wrong. It's misleading. It's confusing. In his book, Faith Works, he gives a brief definition of what saving faith is. And his definition of saving faith is rather cumbersome. Uh, in part, it's some sort of decision of the mind. He doesn't say what that is. And then he said, it's also a surrender of the whole person to Christ. It's turning from all my sins, and it's embracing the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, it's pretty easy to see that that is confusing and that that's pretty easy to debunk. In the first place, faith and belief in the Bible, like faith and belief in English, refers to something we're convinced is true. If I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, I'm convinced he rose from the dead. If I believe he was born in Bethlehem, I'm convinced he was born in Bethlehem. If I believe that John 3.16 is true, then I know I have eternal life because Jesus is telling the truth when he says, whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. Third, surrender and turning from sins and embracing Christ as my Lord and Savior are works. They're not faith. They're contrary to what faith is. Let's look at how Dr. MacArthur's understanding of saving faith impacts our understanding of John 3.16. One way to look at John 3.16 is whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. But if you take it the way Dr. MacArthur says it, then it's the Father has sent his Son so that whoever surrenders their whole life to him and turns from all their sins and embraces him as their Lord and Savior, that person is the one who will never perish but has everlasting life. And look at how this would impact a verse like John eleven twenty seven, 27, where Jesus is talking with Martha and he makes two statements of eternal security. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Two statements of eternal security. And then he says, do you believe this? He's not asking about whether she's turned from her sins or whether she's surrendered her life to him or whether she's embraced him as Lord and Savior. He's asking, are you persuaded that what I just said about eternal security is true? And her answer shows that that's what she understood him to be asking. And she says, yes, Lord, and then says, why she knows that's true. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. I believe that, pastuo hati in Greek, states what she's persuaded is true. It says nothing about her commitment, her surrender, her turning from sins, her embracing him as Lord and Savior, because that's not what he was asking. 
Ultimately, what Dr. MacArthur is doing is changing justification by faith alone into justification by works. And I know he's well-intentioned, and other Lordship Salvation people are well-intentioned, but it's just flat-out wrong. In fact, look at what Dr. MacArthur says in the Gospel According to Jesus on page 48. He says, salvation by faith does not eliminate works per se. That's an amazing admission. It does away with works that are the result of human effort alone, Ephesians 2.8. So he's saying that human effort is required, but not just human effort. It's human effort plus divine effort or divine enablement. He also adds on page 37 of the Gospel according to Jesus, the Gospel Jesus proclaimed was a call to discipleship, a call to follow him in submissive obedience. It puts sinners on notice they must turn from sin and embrace God's righteousness. And there he's talking about embracing God's righteousness in their experience. It was in every sense good news, yet it was anything but easy believism. Whether it's easy or hard to believe the promise of John 3.16, it is believism. It's not worksism. But what Dr. MacArthur is saying, though well-intentioned, is ultimately, by his own admission, saying that works are required. Human effort is required. So when we think about what Dr. MacArthur says about saving faith, we need to recognize that it's flat out wrong. Saving faith is not surrender, it's not turning from sins, it's not embracing Christ as my Lord and Savior, it's not submissive obedience. Saving faith, like all other faith, is being persuaded, and what makes it saving is the object of saving faith, which is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ that whoever believes in Him will not perish but has everlasting life. That truly is good news, and you receive it simply by believing Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus.